Well, hello YouTube and welcome to my studio. And today is Friday, February 18th, 2022. And this is a So Simple Shapes Remix series. Now I'm gonna call this a mini series. So this is, I'm starting kind of something new, meaning, um, all right, I guess it's just kind of, it's just gonna take an explanation. That's all there is to it. So in the opening of this video, Cassidy did a slideshow for me of my So Simple Shapes series that I did on my blog tutorials back in June 2018. So four years ago, I did that and I did 20 12 inch blocks, all with different So Simple Shapes up to the point of Autumn Love because that's what I had out was Autumn Love. And I did um, that quilt that measures 74 by 88 and again, 20 12 inch blocks. So during that time when I was teaching my So Simple Shapes workshops um, around the state and around different parts of the country, I had done some six inch blocks instead of 12 inch blocks. Here's two of them. Can you see those in the screen? Both of those or do I need to mm -hmm. slide them over? Mm -hmm. Just a little bit this way. Okay. So here's block number one and here's block number two. So. I never did a tutorial on these on my blog or put them on my blog, but I did have them on Instagram and showing these six inch blocks that I did. And I had done eight up to that point. And so I've had so many requests since then from you wanting me to show how to do these six inch blocks for my So Simple Shapes. And so I'm gonna revive those and bring them back. And for the next 10 months, in uh, the third Friday of every month, we'll be doing, for the remix series, we'll be doing the So Simple Shapes remix mini series for these six inch finished blocks. And then they end up being 12 inch blocks because see, I put them in a 12 inch star. Okay, and so what I'm gonna be doing is 20 of these blocks, again, for the next 10 months, I will be doing two blocks on the third Friday of every month after the Riley Blake newsletter comes out and the shapes will be listed inside the newsletter as well. And um, I, I will leave links here like I always do with my So Simple Shape series on how to subscribe to that newsletter so that you can get those you know, so simple shapes set. No, you can get that early on that Wednesday. You know which set we're using. And let's see, I feel like I'm skipping all over, but I want to make sure I give you the information. So the So Simple Shapes series, the original one with the 12 inch blocks is still on my blog. So I will leave a link to the last week of that sew along series because within that link, it's called the big finish. And within that blog post, it links to all of the weeks, to all of those blocks, so you can still do those tutorials. But again, those were done with all of the shape sets that I had so far all up to Autumn Love, but that was four years ago, so I have several shapes since then. And so I thought I would um, use some of the original eight that I had already designed, and then I'll be designing more as we go along. And because they will end up being 12 inch blocks, I'm going to be using the same exact setting. I'll just be using different fabric, you know, for the borders and things like that. I'll be using the exact same exact setting that's on the original quilt for this quilt, and they'll just be 20 stars with different six inch applique, you know, little mini applique blocks inside, which I thought it was great. That's why I'm calling it the So Simple Shapes mini series. Now, that doesn't mean that along those 10 months that every once in a while I might not show another block in my So Simple Shapes Remix, you know, I might throw one here and there, you know, if I have time and I get a, you know, great idea and have time to show you, then I might, you know, throw one in every once in a while. But just to let you know, for the next 10 months, this is what we'll be doing. All right, so um, this is block number one. This is block number two. And like I said, they are in the Autumn Love set which these are from my you know remember my binder here bring that in there is that good sis i don't want to spill my pins so here's my binder remember i showed you earlier in the series how you can download this cutting guide 
and it just shows you all the different sets and what size to cut your interfacing and your fabric. And it just gives you a view at a glance of everything that's in those sets, kind of like the shapes. So if you're looking for flowers or something, you can, um, you know, leaf through here and find flower shapes that you like, and then you'll know which set to go into. And then I have each set in the little uh, beekeeper binder envelopes here. And I keep their header in there so I know which set is what. They're all different. Each set is a different color and each set has a different letter in order of which they came out. So this is, these have A's on them. These have B's, these have C's. And that way, when you pull all the different shapes out, you know which set to put them back into. So that's what I keep here in my beekeeper binder. And I have two of them. Why are you laughing, cats? <laughs> because I'm repeating myself over and over again. <laughs> I'd rather give you too much information than not enough. All right, so again, here's the Autumn Love. And these are the shapes. So for both blocks, it's going to be this many shapes, six. So we're using F1, F2, F5, F7, F14, and F23. And I'll list these in the video description so you don't have to memorize these or anything i will list these and then i will list any block cutting today i'm going to show you how to sew one of each of those shapes i just kind of shape them and trim them up so that you know okay so i'll be sewing those and again i just took that out of out of the folder so that you would know which you know, what size fabric to cut and everything for these shapes, okay, in the Autumn Love. And so first we do a background, and I'll be showing you how to do that too, but I just wanted to tell you about the cutting here. Even though I'll have the cutting underneath the video, I still wanna tell you about the cutting. So what I do to start out with the background blocks is, I don't know if you've noticed, let's bring it back over here again, but see how you can see that I've got two different backgrounds in each block. So I'm using my B backgrounds. There's two different one and I kind of make a pinwheel out of them. So what I start out with is I, I don't know if you guys have ever used these art bins, but I really like them because they fit five inch squares perfectly. And so I keep a lot of my B backgrounds in here. And what I do is see, here's the, some five inch stackers and I'll take those and I'll cut them down to four and a half inch squares. So I'll just grab my ruler, set them on the stacker and just cut a four and a half inch square. Okay, easy peasy. For each block, you need two of the same. So you need two four and a half inch squares, two four and a half inch squares. And just on one side, of the block, sorry, not one side of the block, one side of the backgrounds, just one set of backgrounds, you'll need to draw a line. Let me hold this up closer. Is that good, sis? Okay, you'll need to draw a line a half inch apart, a quarter inch from the center. So you could use a half inch wide ruler, you just measure from point to point, a quarter inch this way, quarter inch that way, but just on two of the prints, okay? And then we'll talk about that more when we get to the sewing machine. And then you're just gonna make half, two half square triangles out of two squares. So this is what you'll end up having, and then we'll sew those together. So that's for the backgrounds for the block. Now, one reason I like to use these half square triangles instead of making them into a pinwheel instead of just cutting a piece of uh, solid fabric, which you could do, but I really liked, I like how it adds the interest in the block, but I like how it automatically does lines this way, this way, this way, and this way. And that's when you're laying out your applique pieces, that becomes invaluable. And sometimes um, if I'm just doing one fabric, then I'll press it both ways and this way and this way. So I at least have creased lines. And we'll talk about that at the end of the video when I show you how to lay out one of the blocks. 
Now for the star, I want to give you the cutting instructions for that, and I'll quickly show you how I do these. It's just a matter of four flying geese, and then you need the background squares here. So what you'll need for the background for the flying geese is four three and a half by six and a half, and four three and a half inch squares out of the background, and then you'll need eight three and a half inch squares for the star points. Okay, so that's all the cutting. Again, I'll leave the measurements there. And I think that's all the information you need to know about introducing this series. And I hope you're excited about this as I am. And now I'm gonna go over to the machine and we're going, going to sew up these shapes. All right, so here we are with Miss Doris. And I went ahead and got started sewing these shapes and just left one so I could kind of show you how I do it just in case you're new, but I mean, if you're new to the series, you can see that I've done so many videos on how to sew my shapes. But um, basically what you do is after tracing onto the interfacing with the shape, then you put both right sides up and I just clothesline these. I just feed them through my machine at the same time. And I just use a regular stitch when I'm piecing quilts or maybe a little bit smaller. And I think it is a good idea when you're doing circles to go a little bit smaller. And I just sew to the line right there, use an open toed foot or something where I can see the needle going in. And then I'll just go ahead and sew exactly right on that line, just turning or pivoting when I need to or lifting up the presser foot as I go along. And I just go as slow or as fast as I need to. Now, normally um, I'm really leaning into the machine so I can see exactly what's what's happening when, and I have my readers on if I need to but um since I'm filming I want to stay kind of farther away so that you can see what I'm doing but also another thing that I do let's see when these end up whipping around I just trim them off <laughs> sometimes it's hard to do things far away from the machine another thing that I do sometimes with circles or with shapes that I may be feeling like I'm going to be shaping a lot and working with a lot is I may sew over it twice just to reinforce it. Okay, so when that shape is finished, I'll just sew right off of it and sew onto like a scrap piece of fabric just to keep things nice and neat to save me from having to trim thread tails and having thread tails all over the place. But so here's my shapes here, all sewn on the line and just over sewn from where I stopped and started. So I started here and I went all the way around and ended up kind of doing twice that way. I don't know, let me see a color that you can kind of see. So you can see where I started here, went all the way around and then I sewed twice there and then went off. So that's in, uh, instead of back stitching, so that that back stitching kind of adds bulk. And so then all I do with that is I go ahead and trim things up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you how that I, so I end up trimming like that an approximate quarter inch seam allowance. And let's see. So I'm gonna show you the shapes where you have to have like a cleavage area clipped. So I'm gonna clip, I'm gonna trim this a little bit. I normally would go all the way around with this, but just for saving time purposes, because I have a lot to show you today. I'm just gonna cut that part off. I wanna take a smaller pair of scissors and right here in this V area or cleavage area, I'll just do one clip right to the thread, but not past it. Now I know it's scary to clip all the way to that thread, but you know, put on your readers if you need to, to see close up, just make a clip right to the thread because it still will not lie flat if you only clip it halfway there. It'll help a little bit, but it still won't lie flat. So you just clip it all the way there. This is going to be the same way there. You're just gonna have one clip there. All outer curves do not need any clipping. This will not need any clipping. This will not need any. And this little leaf won't need any. And then these stars, just the same thing. Just one clip here, 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 and here. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and trim these up and get them all shaped. And 
you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to shape one. I feel like I've shown you this over and over again, but I want to be aware of those of you who are just jumping in and learning how to do this. And again, I've shown this so many times over and over again that you can always go back and look at all the videos on my channel and see which ones have uh, my So Simple Shapes and, and uh, watch those. And I'm sure those would be helpful because all of the shapes are different. So this is what I do right here. I've clipped these, as you can see. Then I'm going to pull this apart right here and put a little clip so that I can cut a small X. And that's just so that I can turn. Okay. And then when I turn it, it, you know, certainly doesn't look like much. It's just like, I just try to get it to this point to where it's right side out and just, you know, maybe push a little bit out with my fingers if I want to. But this is really where the tool comes in, okay? This is where I shape it. So I have the interfacing towards me, hold my clover point to point turner here, and this is where I just kind of gently push out the fabric, not the interfacing. I'm just trying to push on the fabric there. And this way I'm kind of pushing the fabric out um, so that it sticks a little bit farther out than the interfacing. Does that make sense? So that on the front you can't see the interfacing. And I've got this other little point. And when I say push, like I'm just, I'm not really like poking at it like this. I'm just gently easing it forward and just pushing out a little bit, rounding it around like this. And then when I get to these points right here, I turn this sideways and kind of push that point out. That one's not, well, push that one through a little bit. This one's not real pokey. Let's see. Okay, so I got that to a point. Now you can see where I pushed that through just a tiny bit. That's not even going to matter. I can put some glue around there, uh, some of the Sioux glue, or I can just leave it like that, and when I go to applique, when I hand applique or machine applique, I'll just make sure that is turned under there and it's not a big deal. And then I bring it over here when I get to this point and I'll do a quick press on those edges just to set those seams because that cotton fabric, you know, will kind of press like that. And then I'll come over here the iron and just give it a quick press and then I'll use the Rite Aid Lake quilters clapper and put on top just so that it will dry nice and flat. When I say dry I should have meant cool off because I do not use steam in my iron. And so the wood will absorb that heat quicker and so then I've got the shape looking like this. All right so I'm going to go through and I'm going to go ahead and shape all of these and get them ready to go and then I'm going to come back and show you how to sew the background and get the star um, sewn and then we'll go from there. Alrighty so I'm back I've got all of these shaped okay and turned and I actually went ahead and did one for everything for block number one so that I can show you how to lay that out here in the end of this video. But before we do that, let's talk about making the background block. So again, I told you that you needed two of one background and two of the other background so that we're gonna end up doing a pinwheel. So all you do is, this one is the one I have marked. I just put them right sides together. And again, we're just gonna sew right onto the line. Now, um, this is my Seam So Easy guide that I have taped here to Miss Doris, and this is what you could do instead of marking the lines, but I just wanted to show you the options, is you can follow this line right here with the points of your fabric, and by following that, it automatically has you sewing a quarter inch away from that, and then you just flip over your square and do it the same way again. But um, I know I've been saying this, that I'll show you how to make something with this other line, but this is one of the things that I do with that. So 
all I do is just feed both of these. So for each background block, you're gonna need four, four and a half inch squares, and two of them need to match each other. So see, I would be following this corner along here. By doing that, it makes me go on this line anyway. I hope that makes sense. But it really doesn't take too long to mark just these two. So this is how I sew two half square triangles out of two squares. And I need four half square triangles for this background. You know, and this is a method that's been around for a long time and I use this method a lot depending on what um, quilt I'm making or, you know, if it makes sense to do that. Okay, so then all I do at that point is just cut them apart. You could use your rotary if you want, but it's just as easy for me to grab my sewing scissors here. I love the long blades on these and it's pretty quick. And then I'm gonna bring these over to the ironing board. Did you notice I, I took time to cover my ironing board with some of my new decorator white fabric? So I'm just gonna press these open because I'm going to be putting applique on them. I do not want them to um, be bulky and I don't wanna to have to worry about which way I'm gonna press the seams. And so I just press them all open and then it lies nice and flat. I don't have to worry about nesting or anything like that. And so what I do is just press them open and, you know, put a clapper on there. Usually I would keep that on a little bit longer, but I just want to show you what that looks like. And I'm not even going to worry about trimming these tails because, let's flip back over to over here. I already kind of started one here. For another block so this is this is what you'll get right here and then what you're gonna do is just form them into a pinwheel just lay them out I like to do with this design board and then you can see as well so what you're gonna do is with the pinwheel the seams are always going this way and you just want every other one to be the different fabric Okay, so I don't want it that way because see how these are going to meet? So I just turn it this way. Okay, and I'm just going to sew those together and that's going to form my block and I'm going to press all of the seams open. And so I'll do that and but to save time um, I want to show you how to do the star. So because I think you know you can figure that out to that point that's pretty easy. So with the star all I'm doing with that is I'm taking these four background rectangles and I'm going to make flying geese out of them. So I've got my three inch squares here. My three, oh wait, what's wrong with this? That's three and a half. This is four. Okay. I got to trim these to four tall. These are three and a half and these aren't. Okay. I was like, why does that square not meet? Okay, so when you're doing flying geese, the square should always be the same height as the rectangle, like that, okay? And so you're just gonna start sewing on this corner after putting right sides together. And then I'm gonna follow this point on my guide so I don't have to mark this and it's gonna go right down the center line. So I'm just sewing a straight line from point to point you never want to guess, especially on a square as big as this, because even though it looks like you may be sewing straight, <laughs> there's always a little bit of a curve in there, and then your block is going to be off. So, so normally I'm just chain piecing these like this. I only need to show you how to do two of them anyway, so I'll trim those these other rectangles down to three and a half inches tall. Okay, now before I can add the other side, I need to trim this and press it. So I trim this 
excess off. Then I'll save these and do something with them. Most of the time, if I can cut a one and a half inch square out of these, then I will. And I add them to my little stash down here. And I've always got some little scrap quilts going. And so that's what I'll do with those. But in the meantime, let me do the same with this. So I can press them both at the same time. I'll bring these over here and I usually just kind of press for a second on those seams because I like to set those seams and make them nice and flat and you can either press this open which I'm going to do or you can press towards the stars if you want but I like in an applique block I want it to all lie as flat as possible and so I'm just going to press that open and I usually just start it with my finger there a lot of times I'll just roll that to make sure it's opened all the way and then I can just put my iron on top of it without having to go like this trying to open the seams. I like to use this to have them already opened. Okay so once that's nice and flat like that then I can bring this back over here pick up another square and right sides together and now I know that I want to sew from this corner to this corner so that it will open up like that and be the flying geese so or goose all right so normally I'd just be putting another one through I just wanted to show you what one unit looks like. And this is very easy, basic piecing. And this is how I really like to do these stars. When I'm doing a quilt that has the same star background throughout the whole thing, I might do my method that's it might call the fast flying geese or whatever. But when I'm doing all different stars, which I will be for this, it will be a different print in each block for the star. Then I'll just do it this way. It's easy to cut, that's easy to sew. All right, so once this, let me pull this out here and just kind of sort of semi lay it out. So these go in the corners. And then once this other half is sewn, so you can see how you're Flying geese are there. I think this is cooled down enough that I can stick that in there. You get the idea. So this is going to be the same unit four times and you'll just put them like that. And then your applique block is going to go into the center and you just sew it together like a nine patch. So when you are sewing your block together, you will just sew these three, these three, and then those three there with the block, and then sew those three rows together, just like you normally do a star. All right, so I've just kind of shown you here and there the little segments on how to prepare your background, your block, and let's go over to the applique, and I'll show you how to lay that block out. All right, so I'm gonna be showing you how I lay out a block. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do block number one, which is this right here. And so this is what the background ends up looking like. Remember when I showed you how to sew that and see all these little end things? I don't worry about that because this is all pressed open. I'm, you know, you can trim those off if you want. But we're going to end up trimming this off when we finish the applique using the six and a half inch ruler. So we're going to end up trimming all of this outside off anyway. And so you know, I don't take the time to trim those off. It's just not, you know, that big of a deal to me. So, all right, let me get this centered up for you. Okay, how's that, sis? Is that good right there? Yep. Okay. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I've got to have my applique pins, remember, and I've showed you. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with these supplies, I talk about all of these that I use in my So Simple Shapes remix series number one 
and I will link that as well if you need to if you're a beginner to my applique method so that you can watch that. So I think I'm you know I'm just gonna continue on assuming that you have done my method before so I can show you how to lay this out. And so what I'm gonna do with that is I'm just gonna put this in the center, but I took this Sue glue and I glued this onto the center of that circle already. Okay, and so now that becomes one unit. And what I do there is I just put a pin here in the middle and I kind of eyeball it at first. And then I know that this is the center and I can go ahead and put that pin in. And of course I'm putting it right into a design board. And so I know that's going to be centered. If I'm worried about it, that I didn't get it quite centered, then I always have this ruler here. Looks like it's two and a half this way, two and a half this way, two and a half this way, and two and a half that way. So that's that's good. All right, so I just keep a pin in there and I usually will kind of stick another pin there just so that I so that it doesn't pivot, because with one I could pivot it out of the way if I wanted to. Then I'm gonna take these four leaves here. And you know, they don't have to be leaves, but they're green and I'm kind of doing that. I'm gonna bring these in probably about an inch right there. So I'll just move my ruler around and I'm using all of these lines to make sure everything's centered. So on these lines going right here is where I'm gonna center these leaves. And that's why I love doing the backgrounds like this because it's just so easy to lay things out and I really love how the different backgrounds look. If you're gonna piece a block, you might as well have some interest in the backgrounds, right? Okay, and so there's an inch from the edge there. So before I put a pin in those, I'm gonna bring my trim it ruler here. And even though there's pins in here, I mean, I could take one out. I could push this all the way down, put that right on the center, and I can see that within this six and a half inch trim it ruler with it, this is my seam allowance, what it will look like when it's sewn into the quilt. So within this window, is what's gonna show, and I've got about a quarter of an inch until it gets to that, to the edge, so I'm not gonna worry about chopping all those off, so that's great. And so I'm gonna go ahead, put that pin back in there, and I'm gonna go ahead and stick a pin in each of these leaves. I like to pin everything before I glue baste it down. Okay, and then the next thing is the stars. And, well, you know what? I'm gonna do the stems before I do the stars. So see how this block's got some little stems here? All right, so for my stems, I'm gonna be using this B cross stitch fabric in green, and I'm gonna just use that throughout all of the blocks. All 20 of the blocks are not gonna have stems, but the ones who do have stems, I'm gonna be using the same fabric. So what I did is I just prepared a lot of this for the stems and put it on a small spool that was emptied from my small vintage trim, okay? And I cut it 5 eighths of an inch wide and I used my 1 quarter inch um, bias tape maker by Clover. And I know I've showed you how to do this in all of my So Simple Shape series, so if you have not done this before, and run it through the bias tape maker, then you can go back and watch that. And so for these stems, I think it's, I can easily just cut, let me just wind some of this off, take this ruler, and I can easily just cut for like one and a half inches long. So let me do that real quick. Let me cut four, and I can just measure against each other. We don't have to press these seams, you know, like under at the end or anything because these raw edges are not going to be showing. They'll be tucked under the star and under the circle. All right, so I'll just wind that back up and secure it with a pin. And now I've got these four what I typically do for that, because I know that I'm gonna center them right on these same lines right here. 
we'll see if this will work. I usually just squeeze just a little bit of glue out like this. See just a very thin line on the center there. And that is really enough to hold it into place. And I'll come over here. And I'm just making sure that it's centered right here on the seam. And I love that my background's like this because I have those little lines as a guide. And they're nice and flat because I press them open. If they were pressed to one side, there would be a little lump going each way. You can just tuck those little strings underneath. Okay, so now I've got those like that and I don't even need to pin them because I've already glued them into place. Now I'm gonna take the stars and I'm gonna measure a little more than a half inch. So maybe five eighths of an inch and to where the, this star goes right there. And so I'm gonna put that on the point. And again, you can eyeball it if you want, but it's just as easy to put a ruler right there and just say, okay, that's five eighths of an inch. Make sure the point's on the line and this inside V or cleavage area is right on the center. And I just kind of go around and get all four in. Last one. It's right there. And then before I do any gluing again, I just put that on there and make sure that it's not gonna grow out you know, outside of these lines. If your pieces are growing into this glue part, you need to push, you know, pull them in and pin them because you're gonna end up cutting them off and you don't wanna do that. All right, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and glue each piece down like this. And I just lift it up. That's why I like to pin it first. It's very easy to just lift up these pieces And then I'll add a few more pins, maybe in the points here. And the stems are already glued down, so I just have to glue down the stars. And I don't use a lot of glue. I just use a little, very little bit and just a little daub of glue. And I'll go, go ahead and go around and do all of this. Now, when it's done, I'm going to just quickly take the pins out because I don't want you to have to wait for it to dry. But just pretend I've done the whole thing. <laughs> and it's all glued. I wanna take these out so that I can put this down on top flat so that you can see that when I, after I applique it, and I'm gonna be machine appliqueing mine, and honestly, in all honesty, I haven't applique this yet because I didn't have time because of the photo shoot for my new book, but I wanted to sew the star around it anyway just to show you what it looked like so that I could take pictures and things, but I'll go back and applique this, and I think I'm gonna machine applique mine. I think it'll be super easy just to machine applique those already in the star, I don't know. But typically, those that's what I'm only gonna do for block one and two. From, from here on out, I'll have time and be able to go ahead and do the applique and then trim it down. So what I will do was this would just be on a mat and see how all these lines line up, whoop, line up with the center of the stems. The points of the stars are right here. This is how you can adjust. This corner should be on this seam right here. It's kind of softer here because it's on a design board. And then I'll just go ahead, and of course this will be on a cutting mat, and I will cut here and cut here, and then turn it and cut the other way. And I just love how it shows everything centered and everything lined up. And so six and a half inch trim it ruler is Pretty essential for that and once you've got it cut six and a half then you can go ahead and pop it in your star I went ahead and finished this star so I could show you and so normally this is this is all the cutting again for a 12 inch star normally you would just cut a six and a half inch square of fabric to go in the center of this 
star, but we're going to be using the applique. So I'm really excited about this block. I'm going to show you block two. I, you know, I didn't show you how to lay that out, but obviously it's going to be the same way. See how you can see where it's already into the quilt. This is what I mean, how the windows show your seam allowance and then the outside of the window show your seam allowance and then within is what what the block's going to look like in your quilt. And this is super easy to lay out. It's just the same way. I mean, from here on out in this series, I, you know, I don't know if I'll even need to show you exactly how to lay out each block because it's just the same way because of how I have it set up with, you know, with the background pieces making it so easy as we go along. But again, as I was saying, I know I've given you a lot of information in this, you know, first opening of the series, but I wanted you to be able to refer back to this for, you know, how to sew your star blocks, how to sew your backgrounds. And then each month from here on out, I'll just tell you the sets, show you the pieces, show you the blocks and give you some little tips and tricks maybe if you need to, or just simply show you the pictures and the shapes and so that you know um, what you're laying out. And um, I'm super, super excited about this. I know I keep saying that, but I just love applique and piecing together. And I love how this is going to look and it's gonna be really fun to use that same setting that I did in my original So Simple Shapes series on my blog with the 12 inch blocks. So I simply turned these cute little mini blocks. They're six inches into 12 inch blocks so that we can use that same setting. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Hope you're excited about this mini series as much as I am. And please leave me a question if I, you know, if I haven't covered something, you have a question about this series and I haven't covered it, please, um, you know, leave a question in the comments or just leave me a comment. Let me know how you like this series, how you liked this video. I appreciate all your feedback. I read every one of your comments and thank you so much for subscribing to my YouTube channel. I really appreciate it and I'm so excited to keep bringing you more and more things to create and just show you what's going on in my sewing room. I'll chat with you later. Thank you.